For those of you that think that gospel me, y'all, welcome to my channel. That was a clip from Kirk Franklin. Now, if you saw the clip, that means YouTube let it go through. If not, that means they shut it down. This is the story of gospel singer Kirk Franklin. Kirk Dwayne Franklin was born on January 26, 1970. Is an American songwriter, choir director, gospel singer, and a pseudo rapper. He's best known for leading urban contemporary gospel and Christian R&B ensembles such as The Family, God's Property, and One Nation Group, among many others. He has won numerous awards, including 19 Grammy Awards. Variety dubbed him as a reigning king of urban gospel and is one of the inaugural inductees into the Black Music Entertainment Walk of Fame. Kirk is a native of Fort Worth, Texas. He was raised by his Aunt Gertrude, having been abandoned as a baby by his biological mother. His auntie Gertrude would turn in cans and bottles to raise money for him to take piano lessons from the age of four. He excelled and was able to read and write music while also playing by ear. At the age of seven, he received his first contract, which his aunt turned down. He subsequently joined the church choir and became music director of the Mount Rose Baptist Church, adult choir at 11 years old. In his teen years, Kirk rebelled against his strict religious upbringing and in an attempt to keep him out of trouble, his grandmother arranged an audition for him at a professional youth conservatory associated with a local university. He was accepted, but later he had to deal with a girlfriend's pregnancy and his eventual expulsion from school for his bad behavior. He studied music with Jewel Kelly in his singing chaperones at Oscar Dean White High School. He continued under her tutelage and ultimately became the pianist for the choir. When he was 15, he witnessed his friend get shot to death after which he returned to the choir where he again directed the choir. He also co-founded a gospel group, The Humble Hearts, which recorded one of Kirk's compositions and got the attention of gospel music legend Milton Bigger, musical director of the Georgia Mass Choir. Impressed, Milton enlisted him to lead the DFW Mass Choir in a recording of Kirk's song, Every Day with Jesus. This led to Milton Bingham hiring him at 20 years old at the time to lead the choir at the 1990 Gospel Music Workshop of America Convention and Industry Gathering. In 92, Kirk Franklin organized the family, which was 17 voice choir formed from neighborhood friends and associates. In 92, Vicki Latale, the co-founder of Legend Gospel Centric Records label, heard one of their demo tapes and was so impressed she immediately signed Kirk and the family to a recording contract. In 1993, the now known as Kirk Franklin and the Family released their debut album, Kirk Franklin and the Family. It spent almost two years on the gospel music charts and charted on the R&B chart, eventually earning platinum status. It remained at number one on the Billboard Top Gospel Albums chart for 42 weeks. It was only the third gospel album to sell over a million units after Aretha Franklin's Amazing Grace and B.B. and C.C. Winans' Addictive Love. Two years later, after releasing one 1995 Christmas album entitled Kirk Franklin and the Family Christmas, the group released What You're Looking For in 96. The album was certified two-time platinum and earned, and earned Kirk his first Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Soul Gospel Music. 1997 brought another album, a collaboration with the vocal ensemble God's Property aptly named God's Property from Kirk Franklin's New Nation. The lead single, Stump, featuring Cheryl Salt James, a and pepper, was a big hit. Enjoying heavy rotation on MTV and other music channels and charting at number one on the R&B singles airplay chart for two weeks, even making it into the top 40. God's Property from Kirk Franklin's New Nation was number one on the R&B album chart for five weeks, number three on the pop charts, and was going to be certified three times platinum. It also brought Kirk another Grammy for Best Contemporary Soul Gospel Album, as well as three Grammy nominations. In 96, his song Joy was recorded by Whitney Houston in the Georgia Mass Choir. The song was included on the best selling gospel album of all time, Soundtrack to the Preacher's Wife. In 1996, he was still in the early days of his career. He was going on tours, representing his talent gospel music to the world, and was hustling hard to make his mark in the music industry. This award-winning musician was dreaming of becoming one of the greatest singers in the world. However, things did not work out as planned for a period of time. During a tour performance, Kirk was more than ready to perform on stage in Memphis. Thousands of fans were waiting for him to start singing, but they instead witnessed his accidental fall instead. Kirk fell into a 10-foot 
orchestra pit and because of no safety precautions beforehand, his head directly bumped into the floor, which caused serious brain injuries. He was immediately transferred to the hospital and after a thorough diagnosis, it was confirmed that his brain was severely injured, which made him go into a coma for several weeks. His family was devastated by the incident and was counting every second, hoping he would eventually open his eyes. What added insult to injury was that months before Kirk and his wife, Tammy Collins, had just gotten married. She was also pregnant when the incident happened. Tammy was told by doctors that her husband would probably never be able to sing again. However, she never lost hope. She had faith in God and prayed, and after weeks of Kirk being in a coma, he woke up. As his career was still young, such an accident could have ruined it all. But by the grace of God, and after several months of proper rest, he reappeared with the new albums and songs. Subsequently, in the year 2001, he began his solo career, and since then, he has actively been producing the best songs. On November 2nd, 1998, God's property sued Kirk. The lawsuit filed in Los Angeles Superior Court alleges that Kirk induced God's property founder, Linda C. Wright, into signing a one-sided contract with B. Wright Music. In 2000, members of the family filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit for royalties for their work on the New Nation Project against Kirk and his gospel-centric records. This saw the end of the Kirk Franklin and family records. As he continued with his newer group, One Nation Crew, releasing Kirk Franklin Presents, One in C. The album was recorded prior to the lawsuit. On January 16, 2010, at the 25th Annual Stella Awards show taped in Nashville, Tennessee, Kirk and the family reunited briefly on stage to perform songs made popular by them in the 1990s. In 2005, he appeared with his wife on the Oprah Winfrey show to discuss how he ended his pornography addiction. In 2010, he published The Blueprint, a plan for living above life storms, a book in which he recounts the family difficulties experienced during his childhood and how he got out of a sexually active lifestyle and addiction to porn. He served as the host and co-executive producer of the BET original series, Sunday Best, and the musical co-host of GSN's The American Bible Challenge with Jeff Foxworthy. In September 2015, he was referred to as a hype man when writing for The New Yorker. After Trinity Broadcasting Network aired the 2019 GMA Dove Awards on October 20th, 2019, Kirk commented that his acceptance speech was redacted to remove comments he made in relation to the slaying of Atiana Jefferson by a police officer. He stated that he was boycotting the award show going forward as it was not the first time they had edited his acceptance speech to remove reflections on police violence against Black Americans. The channel apologized to Kirk saying that it wasn't intentional, yeah right that they were attempting to reduce the running time to meet a two-hour time slot. Several other artists supported his boycott decision. On January 20, 1996, Kirk Franklin married longtime friend Tammy Collins. When they wedded, they each had a child from a previous relationship. As a couple, they had two children together. In March 2021, his oldest son, Carrion, released an audio recording of a private conversation between him and his father in which both can be heard using profane language. Kirk subsequently apologized to his fans and followers. Okay, y'all, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.